Yeah, I made the decision. Um, I did what I thought I needed to do in the with the best interest of the the football team. I didn't feel like, um, you know, we made some adjustments there. I didn't feel like we were playing well enough and coaching well enough on defense. So I made an adjustment, um, and it was my decision, and that's what, and that's what I did. I, it was a tough decision to be able to do this, uh, but again, like I said, I did what I felt like was best for our football team. We're always making adjustments. Um, and and that's what I did. Who makes the final saves on defense? Uh, Coach Patricia. I've been talking about execution all year. Um, been on the same page. Everyone been on the same page, and we didn't execute. Um, I don't think we were we're all were uh, committed enough. You know, you know, just just got to turn it around. You know. Um, you know, it's a challenge that we have to embrace. And just continue to see it through. What do you mean by that, about being committed or not? Commitment. I don't, don't know that I had a dictionary on me now. Um, excuse me. I don't know um, how else to say that. I guess how are you seeing that present itself? It's just, you know, it's a matter of being on the same page. Um, it takes everyone being all in. Um, in all aspects, and, you know, it, it starts with me. Woo-wee! Oh, I'm so glad to see Rita. I'm so glad to see Lawrence. I'm glad I do not see Michael Smith here because, <laughs> oh, man, I, 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 got, I got no defense. I got no defense. <laughs> uh, you know, it was just a couple of weeks ago, y'all. I had Philadelphia 10 and 1. They're 10 and 1. San Francisco lost three games. San Francisco's coming to Philly. Oh, come on to Philly. I'm ready for San Francisco. Come on to Philly. Bring that over here. We're going to show you what's up. They lose that game. And they lose to Dallas. Then they lose to the Seattle Seahawks last night. They panicking. Lawrence, I just feel like they're panicking. Nick Sirianni changing defensive coordinator. Uh, it's just uh, Jalen Hurts talking about a lack of commitment. We're not committed enough. Yeah. What's up uh, in Philly, Lawrence? Man. Lawrence and yeah, Rita, it, tell me what's going on there. It, it's crazy, man. Cause like the uh, the losses to San Francisco and to Dallas, and then they played a lot of games in a very few days. And with playing those good teams, you kind of like, uh, all right, whatever. Those two of the that's your main competition in the NSC. So it's like, all right, yeah, you on the road versus Seattle, but it's Seattle. They they battling. They under 500. They got their backup quarterback in the game. And the game was close, whatever. But find a way to win that game, right? They the Seattle gets the ball with 152 left. And you let your – shout out to Drew Lott, though, boy. He had some ice in his veins uh, in that last drive. Uh, but you you let these guys, uh, you know, you let them cook you on that last drive. And them switching, you know, the defensive coordinator to play call is like, I would I would almost let that just chill. But after this game, now is when I would have had to say something because now you looking at this Giants team ahead, right, and they going to fight with you. You play them twice in the next three weeks, and you got the Cardinals. Now we can't even look at these three games and be like, oh, we just marking that off as some wins. Nah, you can't do that because it's the league. And like you said, uh, Holly, um, you was like, oh, man, I had the Eagles at 10-1, and one, and the, the Niners coming off three losses. That just show you how quickly – this NFL thing could change, and it's a week-to-week league. It's about who could string them wins together at the right time. The Niners is doing it. The Eagles is not. And now they dropping losses to teams that are much inferior to them, at least on paper. So what they have to do, and as far as Jalen Hurts goes about, you know, commitment, they just got to find a way to win. Like, stop yeah. being so stagnant on offense. The offense is getting stagnant. And predictable. We even had Christian McCaffrey call out a play, although he would know what they was gonna do next because he does that. But uh, but still, like defense gotta tighten up. The pass defense is the worst in the NFL. What happened to the oh. pass rush that the Eagles had last year? It literally went right. from the best. The reason why Brock Purdy and Josh Johnson got hurt in last year's NFC Championship game with a pass rush. They don't have pass that rush. now. So. It's just you you gotta find just you have to win this game. 
some way, somehow. And I would say you got to look good doing it. But, you know, as of right now, it don't look good. You don't ever want to back into the playoffs. You want that home game. Lawrence said everything. I mean, listen, everything that he said is is so valid. First and foremost, you know, you're in a position, like you said, the defense hasn't been getting a pass rush. And in the past, the Eagles have had close games and they were winning those games. And now they're in a position where they're not winning the close games that they were in. Well, and I'm not even counting the fact of losing big to San Francisco, losing big to Dallas, right? I'm talking about the close game that we saw last night where they were up until they weren't. But ultimately, you know, you've got to find a way to win and I agree with you but here's the thing they had an opportunity to win that pass that interception at the end of the game was completely uncalled for you had two timeouts yeah. at that point. the middle of the field is wide open you just ripped off a big play a big run play so I don't for the life of me understand why you did what you felt like you needed to do instead of just trying to get the game into overtime which you would in my opinion if the game goes into overtime the Eagles win the football game right, but for whatever right. reason they they tried to end it right then and there. It turned, obviously, it, it not in their favor. And now here we are talking about, oh, what's happening to the Eagles? Well, what's happening to the Eagles is, again, the defense isn't good. And, again, the, the offense just kind of isn't really clicking. They're, they're, having, they're turning the ball over. They're moving the ball. They're getting the yards, but they're not scoring the touchdowns for whatever reason. And so now you have to reassess yourself. And like you already said, you got three very, very winnable games. And before, you probably were very confident about that. But we've learned that the Giants, for whatever reason, just don't want to give up. They just want to keep trying to win football games, number one. And the two, the Cardinals have been pesky all year. Ask the Dallas Cowboys about that. So my thing is this. You not only have to win those games, clearly, because you need to win these games for the division. You got lucky that Dallas got skull dragged by the Bills. You get the opportunity to win this out because your schedule allows it, but you cannot only just win these games. You have to beat these teams down in order to create some type of momentum moving into the playoffs. Cause as of right now, the number one seed is not it. it that's you got to worry about winning the division and then you can worry about winning the number one seed. If you're lucky. No, it's just so interesting. Uh, just watching the, the Eagles all year. And I think, I think you could you could be panicky back to Nick Sirianni. You can be panicky and correct. I mean, both things can be true. All right, all right. It was just a hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Okay. Hey, man. You know, the press conferences are recorded, right? You know, those cameras work and those microphones that are in front of you, they work. They're working microphones. So he was just asked. Last week, hey man, you gonna make a change? No. Why? I believe in our staff. Then you make a change. <laughs> you make a change, <laughs> and next week, you would just, we saw you, Nick, on camera. You were on camera. You said, nah, 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 I ain't gonna make a change. Let's say, look, we're, we're, we're looking, at everything's on the table. Either, either you lied, which is okay, that's, that's, that's your business. You lied to preserve the, the operation. You knew what you were going to do. You didn't want the media to know, or you told the truth. Then you lose a game and you are reactionary. You overreacted to what the last thing you saw. I I, I don't know. It, it just seemed very nervous right now. They seem very nervous. And to hear Jalen hurts talking about commitment. Ooh, yeah, he, now, he, he, he who he talking he about? Mean he, right. I mean, he might just be meaning, he might just be talking about like commitment to making some damn plays. That what he talking about because there's plenty of plays to be made that, you know, they ain't making on both sides of the ball. Like ain't nobody, they ain't got no major injuries. They ain't suffering, you know, in, in that aspect. Like they got, they studs in the lineup. So it's like they didn't have Darius Slay. But even with him, they still had the worst yeah. pass defense. Like, so maybe yep. that's what he's right. talking about, uh, you know. But, you know, he said, as the quarterbacks usually do or should do, at least he said, he says, start with me. And, you know, read it that he could be talking about that last pass that he threw that he didn't have to. Very uncharacteristic of him. Like, I, I, that's like, it's that's I like too that. giddy for me. Not yeah, this hey. year. It's not, it's not yeah. uncharacteristic this I year mean, at like, all. He has turned the ball over a lot. Yes, fair, amongst fair. the uh, 
uh, amongst the league leaders too. Um, you know, that I mean, there's always context and a lot of turnovers. Like Dak last year had 15 picks, but people won't watch that half of those where, you know, tip passes or whatever. And now you see that to be the case this year with him. But yes, it's fumbling picks. But just like Jalen Hurts being in the moment when it's time to go, like he could have threw the two picks earlier in the game when it ain't matter as much. But when you going down to win the game like he did versus the Buffalo Bills, he didn't flinch. That's what I thought we was about to see against the Seahawks, but we did it. Oh, it's just and now and and what did you guys think about? uh, You know, we showed Matt Patricia. Now this has been a good year for Matt Patricia, because think about it. Last year, he would really he really was that woman who was yelling at me in the street, Rita, over parallel parking. Uh, there were about there were about a, a, a thousand or ten thousand of them yelling at Matt Patricia last year, and they didn't just say why are you in that parking spot? They're like, why the hell are you in our town? Why are you in our region? Get the hell out of here! He was run out of New England because he's an old coordinator of the Patriots, and, and and everybody said, well, why did you make a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator? Turns out, Matt Patricia did a better job with the Patriots offense than Billy O'Brien has. So, and that was his first time doing it. So he winds up in Philly, instead of being with the Patriots, who got three wins, he's with the Eagles, who came into last night with three losses. What a turn of events. And now he's a defensive coordinator of the Eagles. However, I don't know about that coverage last night. I don't know, was it it the call from Patricia? Or should the safety know to get over (laughs) And give James Bradbury some help because Jackson Smith and Jigba is behind Bradbury, and the <laughs> only thing that can slow him down is going to be a safety. You put that on the players, you put that on the coach. Rita, you tell me. I mean, you hope for the sake of Matt Patricia that that's a communication issue, right? I would like to think that he he has been even a head coach in this league, uh, and and then that's because he was known for his defense. So I would like to think that he's the person that said to do the right thing and then the players did something different but ultimately until we know what the call was we're gonna have to go with what we saw on the field which was obviously they didn't have the coverage on jackson as they should have so i would hope that matt patricia was like hey 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 when they came when they came on the sideline he was like you know you wasn't supposed to be there I mean, like, what what were you thinking when you when, when this was happening i would like to think that this was not on him and until we know that the, what the call was we gotta go with the players i think yeah, usually um, it, it is when you watch it from the broadcast standpoint, it could be one of two things. It could be the safety just seeing, oh, damn, my corner need help. Or it could be the safety uh, just getting there late uh, in the coverage, cover three or cover four or whatever. But you can't really see what anybody else is doing on the field. So we can't really determine that from what we saw. What we saw is that it just looked bad. Two plays in a row, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. DK Metcalf <laughs> kept the, caught the one on the same side, and it was the same setup. Like, uh, Brown got over there a, a tick too late. Uh, DK Metcalf was on top of the cornerback. Bradbury, he caught it. They come back and they did the same things. It did this, except Jackson Smith and Jig, but he scored it this time. Two big plays. It's just crazy, man. It, it, it's inexcusable, man. Even though they had, and, and it's not just on Bradbury in the secondary, like Jalen Hurst said, commitment, everybody. They had mm. plenty of times to win that game. So you don't want to put it on one play when you've let a team hang around. You let them hang around. You shouldn't let them hang around. I'm going to tell you that, that, this before we uh, take a break here. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous for Philadelphia. I've been talking big trash about Philly. Uh, talking trash about Philly, talking trash against San Francisco. Oh, bring it on. We're going to be there in the NFC Championship game. The whole thing. Just taking on. I'm very nervous about this because that change with Patricia, defensive coordinator, I want to let Philly, uh, Philly people know Matt Patricia usually eats the lunch of quarterbacks like Drew Locke. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's his jam. I mean, that's his thing right there. Drew Locke. Hey, Rita, it's like this. You're, you're a baseball fan, Rita. It's yes. like, when, when teams have team meetings, they have these players-only meetings, they say, 
Well, you better make sure the pitcher the next day uh, has got an ERA of like six to make mm. your team to justify your team meeting. Make sure oh team meeting was great. You go out and you put up 12 runs on some backup pitcher or some some like back of the rotation pitcher. That's what Matt Patricia was presented with. Hey, I'm the D coordinator. This other dude had to deal with Josh Allen. He had to deal with Patrick Mahomes. He had to deal with Dak Prescott. No, I get Drew Locke. My first day as D coordinator, I get Drew Locke, and Drew Locke takes the ball at his own eight yard line, less than fewer than two minutes to play, one timeout, and he cooks you. Ooh, it's bad. Oh, it's just bad. I, I gotta go. Lawrence, good to see you, brother. Uh, yeah, I, I don't you even. I, I, I just, ooh, this is. You know what? Nasty business is what we like to call it. We like to call it nasty business. They better win them three games. I, they better. I can't. I can't face Michael Smith. This is about Michael Smith. I can't face him. I can't face him. I, I can't do it. Hey, thank you for watching Brother from Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.